Hello viewers. Uh, welcome to the CS Foundation Ec Economics MCQs. In this video, let us try to solve uh, 10 questions from uh, the introduction to uh, economics uh, chapter. So there are two types of uh, questions that uh, we will be dealing here. One is uh, the knowledge based question and other is the uh, application question. So let's see the questions that we have. Let's start with the first question. The first question that we have is uh, who is the father of economics? This is a very simple question and the answer is very well known to all of us. The options given are Adam Smith, Alfred Marshall, Paul Samuelson and none of the above. Uh, the, the, right, uh, the right option for this would be option A which is Adam Smith. Let's go to the second question. Second question for us is uh, Paul Samuelson proposed dash definition. So the options given are A, material well-being, B, science of uh, wealth, C is science of choice making, D is economic growth. Now when we come to this, uh, material well-being was uh, given by Alfred Marshall. So this is not the option for us. The second option that we have here is science of wealth. This was given by Adam Smith. So this is also not the right option. Option C is science of choice making in presence of scarcity. Uh, this was given by Lionel Robbins. So this is also not the right answer. So the right answer for us would be uh, this, which is economic growth. So the answer for the second question is Paul Samuelson proposed uh, economic growth. Let's go to the next question. Question number three. The question is uh, production possibility curve is also known as dash. See, this is a knowledge based question. There is nothing there is no th there is nothing to apply here. The answer for this is uh, transformation curve. So it is definitely not supply curve, demand curve and production curve. Let's move on to the fourth question. Freedom of choice is a feature of which economy? Now, if we know the features of the three economies that we have, socialist economy, mixed economy and capitalist economy, this question becomes very easy for us to answer. We know that uh, socialist economy is also called planned economy. Here, everything is controlled by the government. So this would not be the answer for us. Next one is the mixed economy. We know that in mixed economy, both the government and the private players will uh, uh, share the resources and carry out the businesses. So here also there is no complete freedom of choice. Uh, this is not all of the above for sure because two options are already gone. So the remaining option is the capitalist economy and that should be the right answer. It is capitalist economy because the private players are uh, uh, at their freedom to select the kind of goods and services that they want to produce and supply. So the answer for this question is option C which is capitalistic economy. Let's move on to the next question that is question number five. The question for us is uh, from the national point of view which of the following indicates micro approach. See we know that uh, you know the when we discuss the scope of economics we have discussed that the scope of economics has two parts one is the uh, micro uh, economics and other is the macro economics. In micro economics we generally deal with the economics which is related to uh, individuals, households and firms. Whereas in macroeconomics, uh, we, we talk about uh, the uh, uh, factors which are associated with the country such as employment, inflation, uh, you know, to to total output, the exports, imports, such factors. So this question is from the national point of view, which of the following indicates the micro, micro approach? So here, if you look at the options, it is per capita income. This is at the macro level. This is co this is considering the national income and the population of the country. So this is not the answer. Second option given to us is uh, underemployment in agriculture. Uh, again, this is not the answer because this is considering the entire agriculture sector of the country and this is macro in nature. Lockout of a factory in Sundarnagar. So we are talking about a particular factory in the city of Sundarnagar. So this might be an option. Let us see the fourth one before we uh, conclude that C is the answer. Total savings in India. Again, this is talking, this is this is again talking at the national level. So what happens is the right uh, choice for this would definitely be option C because it is talking about one factory in a place called Sundarnagar. So the answer for this is uh, lockout of a factory in Sundarnagar. This is micro in nature. Let's go to the next question that is question number six. 
A capitalistic economy uses dash as the principal means of allocating resources. Now, uh, we know that in a capitalistic economy, the private players uh, can own resources and they run businesses. So when they set up businesses, uh, they keep in mind uh, uh, one important thing and that is the returns. So what do we understand by returns? Returns is the revenue that they can earn by running the business. So revenue is directly dependent on the price. So uh, in a capitalist economy, before allocating any resources, the capitalist will think about the price that he can get by producing a particular good or a service. So the answer for sixth question is price. Let's move on to the next uh, question, that is question number seven. Large production of dash goods would lead to higher production in future. See, goods are of different types. Uh, the four options are actually four different goods that we have. So which of them will lead to production in future? Now let us take the consumer goods. Now what are consumer goods? Consumer goods are goods which we uh, buy for consumption. So once we consume, it's over. Take a packet of chips that we uh, purchase. So this will not lead to further production. So this is not the answer. So let's uh, go to the second one, capital goods. Capital goods are goods which will help in the production of other goods and services. So there is a chance that B might be the answer. Anyway, before concluding that B as answer, let us check option C and option D. Agriculture goods. Again, this is not the answer because this, is n this might not help in further production. This might be uh, used for consumption straight away. And the last one is the durable goods. Durable goods are goods which will stay with us for a very long time. Uh, the best example for a durable good is furniture. For example, let's buy a furniture and uh, it will be in our house for next 10, 15 years. So this is also not helping in production. So the answer, uh, like we thought, is B. Uh, so the answer for this is capital goods. Large production of capital goods would lead to higher production in future. Let's take a simple example for uh, capital good. Uh, the best example is, uh, say, uh, sugarcane uh, juice crusher machine. So this is a very simple uh, capital good which will help in the production of sugarcane juice. So capital goods are goods which will help in the further production of goods and services. Let's move on to the next question, that is question number eight. Economics may be defined as the science that explains. So what is economics all about? So there are four options uh, given to us. The choices that we make in the presence of scarcity. So this is what Lionel Robbins told us. So human beings have to make choice in the presence of scarcity and that is economics. This might be the uh, option, let us see. B option for us is the, the decision made by politicians. No, because economics is not just uh, limited to politics and politicians. The decisions made by households. No, economics is much wider than this. Economics would consider individual households, firms, governments, and international governments, and a lot of other things. So this also might not be the answer. And last one is all human behavior. No, it is, it is also not the option. So the right answer for this would be choice A, which says that uh, economics is all about the choices that we make in the presence of scarcity. Let's move on to the ninth question. Ninth question is, uh, socialist economy is a, this is a knowledge-based question. This is something which we need to just remember. The socialist economy is also called the planned economy uh, because here everything is planned by the government and the entire economy runs on the basis of the plans that are drafted by the government. So, so socialist economy is also called planned government, planned economy. All right, let's move to the last question of this uh, series. Uh, the last question is when productivity increases, what happens? When productivity increases, price rises? No, definitely not. Living standard improves. There is a good chance of this being the answer. Anyway, let us check the remaining two options. The remaining two options are there are fewer good jobs? No. When productivity increases, there is good amount of jobs that are created and there would be good jobs also. And uh, the last one is uh, living standard deteriorates. No, definitely not because when there are more goods and services produced, the living standard would only improve. It will definitely not deteriorate. So the answer for us, like we thought earlier, is option B, where the living standard improves when the productivity increases. 
Thank you. Hope uh, these ten questions have given you some insights into the MCQs that we have in economics. Thanks for watching.